The Big Blue is in a division. The conference is just horrible. You have the Philadelphia Eagles. They're fantastic. They've been dealing from sharp attacks by the Cowboys, Micah Parsons. Yeah. Which I have no idea why he's attacking Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts is probably the quietest, nicest quarterback in the NFL that actually takes responsibility for his team's losses and his team bad play. Yes, Zach, maybe you should learn something from Jalen Hurts. You would think Micah Parsons would attack Zach Wilson, not Jalen Hurts. And I like what Mike Parsons said after the fact that he went on that podcast and said that about Jalen Hurts. And he didn't say anything really that bad. He says Jalen Hurts is as good as his team is. And he believes that Jalen Hurts really doesn't deserve all the credit. It's his team. It's the talent of his team, which I think is crazy when the quarterback position is the most important position on the field. But getting back into the Giants, you have the Cowboys. You have the Washington football team, a.k.a. the Commanders, a.k.a. the Skins. All four of those teams can make the playoffs. And the way everything is falling into place, that quite possibly could happen. Seattle hasn't played well. The Rams are out. Arizona is out. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers should be out. We don't even know who's going to win that division with Tampa. They've looked horrible. Atlanta's look horrible. The Carolina Panthers have looked better out of all of them. Because if maybe Steve Wilk taken over... Maybe it's him. I have no idea. But they're the only team that really stands out in that division. And who knows? Maybe they slip right into the playoffs. They did it before. 7-8-1 in 2014. These divisions are horrible. And I don't even want to get into the Packers division. And yes, Minnesota is the number two team in the NFC. We understand that. And I know a lot of people love Kirk Cousins. I'm not a Kirk Cousins fan. I think Kirk Cousins has shown his true colors in the playoffs. My questions right now is, what are the Giants? Who are the Giants? Dable is a good coach. And a lot of press and writers have been attacking Dable. Why? Because they're not the same team they were in the beginning of the season. But we all knew that was going to happen. We all knew it. It wasn't a sell that Dable wasn't going to find a way to win against the better teams in the NFC. Who does he have to throw to? Darius Slayton? Does everybody think he's a number one wide receiver in the NFL because he has a couple of good weeks? They don't have a number one guy. They don't. They lost Robinson. They lost Shepard early. None of them are number ones either. And is Daniel Jones the guy? Probably not. But he's done as well as he could with nobody to throw to. And Saquon Barkley, he's playing for a contract. He's having a great season. But he's wearing down because he's touching the ball 30, 35 times a game. He's everything to that offense. And that's the problem. The defense will play. Wink is going to get you in the right position, in the right places with his blitz packages to get to the quarterback, the other team's quarterback, and play semi-decent secondary defense. He does it all the time. He did it in Baltimore. Look how bad Baltimore's defense has been this year since Wink has gone to the New York Giants. It's a different defense. So the defense could hold up. But when you have nobody to throw to, you have nothing on that field. What do you expect? And that offensive line, besides Thomas, has been absolutely horrendous. Especially on the interior where they don't have a true center. So that doesn't help anything. Nick Gates, credit to him for coming back after that scary injury last year. That leg injury, I didn't think he would ever play again. But he's coming back. He's playing a lot of guard. And they don't really have a true center besides that. So that doesn't help the offensive line. And you nailed it with Saquon, too. Like, they're trying to have him carry the ball 30 times which if you want to combine with receiving and targets pass catching that's maybe all right but the Seahawks when they beat the Giants exposed the kind of thing if you could shut down Saquon and make him an inefficient runner it hurts the team offense and every team since then has taken on that blueprint now I'm not saying every team has stopped him great he still ran the ball well in certain games but the Giants team offense has not collectively looked good because of that the Lions who didn't have a great run defense coming in shut down Saquon we saw Jacksonville do it we saw Eagles and the Cowboys both do it too and that's going to be very hard when you don't have a much of a passing game to go with and that's I think the only thing that coaching staff has not been able to adjust to so far this year Brian Dable finally had his first showcase of bad clock management at points of that tie game against the Commanders this week they just got blown out you're going to make mistakes yeah he was doing very well before that with that that was the first blip and then this week with the Eagles obviously it was a blowout anyway so they weren't going to win that but it just again it's not the same level of offense and the defense with all the injuries that it has right now in the secondary really has not been the same either and they could blitz all they want with Wink Martindale they have the third highest blitz rate in the league but still if you're not going to be able to get consistent coverage either especially man coverage it's going to be very hard to operate 
great on defense. And Giants schedule coming up is going to be very hard when they have to deal with the Commanders again this week, who's played very well. They still got the Vikings. The Colts are a game they should win, and then they got the Eagles at the end of the year again, which, if they don't clinch the number one seat, still could be playing their starters. Keep pacing yourself if I were the Giants. Find a way to win at least two of these games. You win two of these games, you're in. Because Seattle, they have a hard schedule. They have to face the Jets in about two weeks. It's not going to be an easy game. The Jets are going to play as hard as they possibly can because they need to make the playoffs and they need to win three out of their four games. Kansas City is another team that is going to be playing all their players because they need to win. So it's not going to be easy for Seattle the next couple of weeks. And more than likely, Seattle loses back-to-back-to-back games. They have San Francisco, Kansas City, and then the Jets, three of the best defenses in the NFL. The Jets are not going to give Seattle and Geno Smith any wiggle room in that game, even if it's in Seattle. Giants fans are going to have to be rooting for the Jets two of these next three games because they got Detroit this week, who's also climbing. They're 6-7 and seven right now, and they have probably the easiest schedule left. After the Jets, they don't have a lot of hard games after that. And then Seattle, too. Right there, still, even if they lose that game, they could still win some of the other ones. And that's going to be hard with the Giants having a hard schedule, too. I think the Commanders are going to be safely in, because the rest of their schedule is pretty easy. But it's a race with those other three teams. The Packers have an outside chance, but it'll be hard for them as well. So it's likely to be either the Giants or the Lions at this rate. It's going to be fun. As far as OBJ and the situation for OBJ, I don't know what's going on with him. I don't know what the injury entails. Nobody even knows. Nobody knows how bad it is, what part of his body is injured. Nobody knows. So we sit here today and we wonder how severe it is. How do we know how severe it is when we don't know what's wrong with him? He's going to be out probably for the rest of the season. I never thought OBJ was going to play. He didn't want to practice with any of these teams before he got signed. Why? Because he wasn't 100% healthy. And right now, if I were any of the teams, and thank God the Cowboys found T.Y. Hilton I don't know if that's going to make a difference because he's an old wide receiver that hasn't really played in the last couple of years. I don't know who is going to take a chance for OBJ. Would I take a shot with OBJ next year? OBJ is an aging wide receiver now. Injury prone wide receiver. I'm not overpaying a guy that can't stay on the field. Buffalo got Cole Beasley too, so they're clearly out. It's snowy. Yeah, he doesn't want to play in Buffalo with the ice, especially if they have three feet of snow later tonight. Good luck to Miami. I don't want to hear about Tua. I don't want to hear about McDaniel. I don't want to hear about any of them. Because they play in Miami when it's 80 degrees, 85 degrees, tropical, beautiful sun. They're going up to Buffalo where there could be about six inches on the ground, freezing cold, 20 degrees, windy. And they say, well, I played in that weather. I played in Alabama in the snow. How often does it snow in Alabama? (laughs) Good luck. You're playing against a quarterback that's from Wyoming. You're also playing against a team that has played in that cold week in and week out for the last couple of weeks. So good luck to the Miami Dolphins. And as far as I'm concerned with the OBJ thing, I don't think you're going to see him this year. You might never see OBJ again. I think he could be done. And if you do, he's not getting a big contract. And anybody that gives him any kind of contract, more than a play-in $5 million contract, you'd be stupid which is what I thought he would get now, and it just doesn't happen that way. He ma- it made all the sense for him to try to rebirth himself in a shorter sample to try to get another three-year deal. Now it does not seem likely unless he does another trial run type contract. Yeah. Now, ladies and gentlemen, our three for all picks of the week. All righty. You mentioned the Miami Dolphins and the Buffalo Bills. They will actually be kicking off very shortly, 8-15 tonight. The over-under for this game is 44. I'm going to take the Bills in this one because I do think it's going to be a very tough transition for the the way that Dolphins defense played last week against the Chargers, allowing a lot of big plays. I think this is a big Gabriel Davis game. I Stephon Diggs will get his 100 yards like he usually does. And Josh Allen will look like that MVP quarterback we saw him in the beginning of the year. That Dolphins secondary kept getting toasted a lot. The Bills pass rush, too, against the Jets playing very well is a good sign without Von Miller, and I think that helps. I think the game will be close still, but I don't think the Dolphins will be able to solve their problems overnight. I don't think they'll miss the playoffs, but this is a game they lose. I'll take Buffalo here. I'm going to take them on the over. Yeah, I got Buffalo in this game. I don't trust Miami in the cold. I don't trust Tua in the cold. And I I think that over the last couple of weeks, they have not protected Tua, maybe because of the injuries on the offensive line and some of these guys playing injured, which I give them a lot of credit, but this isn't the same Tyreek Hill. He is not healthy. You could see him limping on and off the field, icing his knee, icing his ankles. He's just not the same player right now. And Waddle, I don't know what they're doing. They're not giving him the ball enough. He's not seeing the ball enough. And they're not even running the ball as well as they had the last couple of weeks. Last week, they looked like a bum team. So they're not winning in Buffalo. I'm willing to bet on it. But I don't think it's going to be a high-scoring game. It's going to be very windy on Saturday night. 
So I am going to take Buffalo on the under. All right. The next game, the Dallas Cowboys at the Jacksonville Jaguars. 48, the over-under for this one. I am actually going to take the upset here with the Jacksonville Jaguars. There's two things I like about this matchup, one of which is they've, they've done a nice job stopping the run this year, and they've done a good job against a lot of feature running backs, Saquon Barkley, Jonathan Taylor. And I don't think Dallas is going to have that same level of a rushing attack. It took a while for them to get it going at certain points against the Texans, who have the worst rush defense in the league. They ran well in the first, and they ran well in the fourth, and that was it. And now you can't do that. And Trevor Lawrence has been fa fantastic the last four games, only quarterback without any interception in that span. And Dallas' secondary has been banged up lately. So I'm going to take the upset here. I'm going to go Jacksonville on the under. I'm going to take the Cowboys in this game. I think the Cowboys can put pressure on Trevor Lawrence. If you could put pressure on Trevor Lawrence, you can make him make mistakes. I believe he will make mistakes in this game, and it will throw him off his spots. So give me the Cowboys on the over. All right, the last game, the Tennessee Titans at the L.A. Chargers. The over-under is 46 and a half for this one. This will be a close game. The Titans have had trouble at stopping the passing game. The Chargers you saw last week get a lot of big plays against the Dolphins. That being said, Tennessee's front seven is still very physical. I think they'll be able to stop the run. The Chargers have had issues running the ball. As good as Austin Eckler's been with scrimmage yards, he's actually been under 50 rushing yards in two of the last three games. So I think the Titans will be able to contain him. I think they'll be able to hold him to field goals, and I think they'll be able to run the ball effectively too. Derrick Henry against a really bad Chargers run defense. So I'll take Tennessee in this game. It will be close on the over. I want to take the Titans because I do not want to see the Chargers win. And they have a very easy schedule. And if they win this game, it's easy sailing for them. So I'm going to take the Titans in this game anyways because I don't want to see it. I don't want to see the Chargers win. I don't want to see Justin Herbert win. And I don't want to see my team lose and not make the playoffs. So give me the Titans on the over. I like that too. Who would have thought you would be hating the Chargers more than me this week? <laughs> I don't want to see the Chargers win. And the way Justin Herbert's playing, he's playing lights out right now. He really is. He's been unbelievable. And what he did against Miami and just completely carved them apart on national TV, I do not want to see that happen against Tennessee. Tennessee needs this game. Because yeah. if they lose this game and Jacksonville wins this Here week, come the Jags. The Jags could win the division. They could go into Thursday night football if they beat the Jets and take over full custody of first place. That's crazy. And Trevor Lawrence is in an easy division, and, and he's been fantastic. You, you can't really take shots at him. He has been fantastic. He's been the best quarterback in the NFL for the last four weeks. Yep. That says a lot about who he is and what Peterson has turned him to be. The only so. quarterback without an interception, and that's fam. That's right.